Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When most people think of laser weapons, they often envision spaceships, floating battle stations, and glowing swords. However, while they are very real, laser weapons are quite different from what we see in science fiction. That doesn't mean they're any less deadly. In fact, one of the most ambitious laser deployment attempts involves a converted Boeing 747, designated the YAL-1. In the early 2000s, the United States military tested this airborne laser testbed by mounting a megawatt-class chemical oxygen iodine laser or coil on its nose. The goal was to use a high-powered beam of energy to destroy incoming ballistic missiles before they could strike their intended targets. Over the course of more than a decade, the U.S. military experimented with the YAL-1 concept. The Boeing 747-400F was chosen for its size, which allowed it to carry the large laser apparatus as well as the necessary chemical fuel for multiple engagements. As it was designed for international commercial travel, the plane also had the ability to fly at high altitudes to engage targets over a long distance. At the time, the coil was one of the most powerful laser systems in the world. In theory, the YAL-1 would be able to intercept and destroy ballistic missiles during their boost phase. This would be strategically advantageous, as destruction would happen shortly after launch, potentially even over enemy territory. This would mitigate the threat of debris and minimize the missile's potential for harm. However, this mission proved both costly and complex, as it required the YAL-1 to detect track and engage rapidly accelerating targets at long distances. Eventually, the U.S. military determined that the YAL-1 was not the proper approach for intercepting ballistic missiles. However, while the program did not go forward, it was far from a failure. Indeed, it further proved the viability of directed energy weapons when used for offensive and defensive purposes. The DLWS, or Demonstrator Laser Weapon System, incorporated into the YAL-1A, helped researchers better understand how to develop tactics, techniques, and procedures for the use of laser weapons in military operations. The ultimate goal being to provide armed forces with new capabilities for precision engagement. The YAL-1 was not the last time a Boeing aircraft carried a laser weapon. In 2017, a high-energy laser was fitted to the wing of an AH-64 Apache helicopter over a missile range in New Mexico. The laser was then used to track and fire upon a specific target, which it accomplished very easily. The missile system was developed by Raytheon, a major American defense contractor and leading developer of high-energy laser weapons. These systems offer clear advantages over traditional munitions including a low cost per shot, precision targeting capabilities, 
and the ability to engage multiple threats simultaneously. The air is far from the only place where laser and energy weapons might prove useful. In fact, the United States Navy has been testing systems like this for well over a decade. One such test included installing the laws on board the USS Ponce, an Austin-class amphibious transport dock. This demonstration showcased the practical utility of laser systems in a real-world setting proving the law's effectiveness in targeting and neutralizing various threats. Perhaps most impressive of all is the weapon's precision, striking both surface and aerial targets with a minimal margin of error. The rise of laser weapons does not mean that projectile weapons will no longer be used for military purposes. However, it may force them to become more powerful and more accurate. A prime example of this is the millions of dollars various militaries are investing in electromagnetic railguns. These weapons are known for their ability to launch projectiles at extremely high velocities, far beyond what conventional firearms or artillery can achieve. The technology focuses on using a pair of parallel conductors, or rails, along which a sliding armature is accelerated. This is accomplished using a powerful electrical current, which is why most current railguns are attached to full-size generators. The rails are typically made of conductive materials, such as copper or aluminum. Railguns can accelerate projectiles at speeds exceeding several miles per second which is significantly faster than even the most powerful gunpowder-based weapons. This high velocity allows the projectile to not only travel great distances, but also to maintain a flat trajectory and achieve incredible kinetic energy upon impact. In November 2016, the Office of Naval Research and Naval Surface Warfare Center conducted the first firing of its new electromagnetic railgun at the terminal range. According to everyone present, the test was a huge success. Still, the benefits of these weapons remain somewhat tempered by their limitations. These include managing the immense heat generated during firing, which can wear out the rails and the armature. In short, the weapons disperse so much energy when fired that they eventually cause the weapon to break. Another problem is the need for a large and rapid power supply, which is crucial in order to fire the weapon at all. Nonetheless, this prototype currently has the ability to fire projectiles at speeds of up to Mach 7 and a range of up to 100 nautical miles. 
Because of the sheer amount of kinetic energy the projectiles carry, they can do immense damage to ships before they even know the weapon is in the area. Because railguns do not use explosive propellants, their projectiles are much safer to build, store, and move. This is not the case with conventional ordinances, which have been the subject of many accidents over the years and decades. When it comes to handling such weapons properly, practice makes perfect. So it's just got a hole. This is even more important when it comes to allies. The Artrius military exercise is a U.S.-European command training series involving Norway, Poland, Romania, and the United Kingdom. Artrius aims to showcase the ability of the U.S., its NATO allies, and partner nations to rapidly deploy precision air-to-surface missile, ground missile, and rocket fire capabilities within the European theater. Over the years, the exercise has focused on a wide range of different strategies, including the Rapid Dragon system. This enables cruise missiles on pallets to be launched from the back of mobility aircraft, which is often referred to as a bomb bay in a box. The idea behind palletized missiles or bombs centers on enhancing the flexibility, rapid deployability, and overall capacity of air forces to deliver long-range precision strikes. By using palletized systems, Missiles or bombs can be preloaded onto pallets and launched from cargo aircraft using standard airdrop procedures. The pallets themselves can be constructed in a matter of minutes. Before long, an airstrip with no bombing capabilities can utilize virtually any large aircraft to launch a full air-to-ground strike. Once assembled, the pallets can be loaded into the back of the aircraft using any available cargo equipment. They can be secured using cargo straps as well, ensuring that they don't jostle around during flight and reducing the chances of any accidents. When it comes time for launch, the Rapid Dragon system operates just like a cargo drop. The bombs are armed before being ejected from the aircraft in their palletized containers. They then deploy parachutes to stabilize and orient the munition for launch. Once stabilized, the missile is launched toward its target while the aircraft remains at a safe distance. By using cargo aircraft that are not typically associated with strike missions, 
forces can potentially catch adversaries off guard. Additionally, the range of the missiles allows for strikes deep behind enemy lines without putting pilots and high-value aircraft at risk. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.